Hello. Today we are going to talk about spherical and elliptical distributions. These form a larger class of distributions which include the multivariate normal distribution as well as the multivariate t distributions. In special cases like if we consider the multivariate uncorrelated normal distribution we can see that that would be a spherical distribution. It is very important to learn these two classes of distributions because they have ample application to analysis of real life data. Let us first look at the spherical distributions. As I have said, spherical distributions generalize uncorrelated multivariate normal and t distributions. Now in spherical distributions, the marginal distributions, they will be identical and symmetric. The only spherical distribution which has independent component random variables, that is the standard multivariate normal distribution. Before we go further into spherical distributions, we need to know a few definitions. First, we'll consider orthogonal linear transformation. A linear transformation u that is orthogonal if u u transpose is equal to u transpose u and that is equal to the identity matrix. If we have a random vector x which consists of the components say x1, x2, 2, xn, then x has a spherical distribution if the distribution of ux where ux is an orthogonal linear transformation of x will have the same distribution of x whatever be the orthogonal linear transformation u. This means the distribution of x is going to be invariant under rotations. Let's look at theorem 1 which is very important. Suppose we have an x vector which is a random vector and it has the spherical distribution. Now x having a spherical distribution is equivalent to stating that there exists a function psi such that for all vector s belonging to the n-dimensional real space, the characteristic function of x that is phi suffix x s that is equal to psi s transpose s that is psi s1 square plus s2 square to sn square where the vector s has the components s1, s2 to sn. Again, x has a spherical distribution is equivalent to stating that for all vector a belonging to the n-dimensional real space, a transpose x that will have the same distribution as a transpose a into x1 where x1 is the first component of the random vector x. a transpose a as we see is nothing but summation ai square for i running from 1 to n. Theorem 2 states that the random vector x with n components that has a spherical distribution if and only if it can be represented as r into s where s is uniformly distributed on the unit sphere s with superfix n minus 1 as written over here and r which is non-negative is a random variable that is independent of s. Let us look at an example, the multivariate normal distribution. Consider the multivariate normal distribution in the standard form. That is, it has mean vector equal to null and the dispersion matrix is the identity matrix. Then the characteristic function of x will be given by e to the power minus half s transpose s. So I can write this as psi s prime s. 
So as we see, this psi function is a function of s1 square plus s2 square to sn square, where s1, s2 to sn are the components of the vector s. Then x follows a spherical distribution, and this function psi that is called the generator of this distribution. And what is the form of this generator? As we can see, psi for any v is going to be e to the power minus half v. Now let's come to example 2 which talks about the normal variance mixtures. Now let's first see what a normal variance mixture is. Consider a random vector x, then this random vector x is said to have a normal variance mixture if x has the same distribution as mu plus root w a z where z is distributed as k variate normal with mean vector 0 dispersion matrix i w which is non-zero is a scalar random variable that is independent of z and a is a matrix of order n into k and mu belongs to the n-dimensional real space and this matrix A and the vector mu, these have all elements constant. They are not all equal but they are constants. Now suppose X has a standardized uncorrelated normal variance mixture then we write that x is distributed as mn null i n w hat. x will be said to be spherical if the generator psi v is given by w hat v by 2. And what is this w hat? This is nothing but the Laplace transform of w. It should be noted that there are also spherical distributions that are not normal variance mixture distributions. Elliptical distributions. Now, how do we obtain these elliptical distributions? Well, they can be obtained as affine transformations of the spherical distributions. See, x and y are affine spaces. Then, for every affine transformation if, from x to y, that is going to be of the form x2 mx plus b, where this m is a linear transformation on the spa space capital X, small x is a vector in capital X, and b is a vector in capital Y. This defines the affine transformation. Now, to know a little more about this, that is your affine space, we see that in mathematics, an affine space is nothing but a geometric structure. It generalizes some of the properties of the Euclidean space and it does it in such a way that it is independent of the concepts of distance and measure of angles but it keeps only the properties related to parallelism and ratio of lengths for parallel line segments. Now the elliptical distributions or the class of elliptical distributions, they include the general multivariate normal and t distributions as well as all other spherical distributions. The properties that they possess are very similar to those of the normal distribution. And the elliptical distributions, they are closed under linear operations. These are the beauties of the elliptical distribution. Now the class of elliptical distributions can be looked upon as a very rich class of distributions because they include both heavy and light tail distributions. If we look at the marginal and conditional distributions of an elliptical distribution, then those are also going to be elliptical distributions. The parameters of the elliptical distributions may be estimated using the maximum likelihood method. 
such as we can use the EM algorithm or any other related iterative techniques. Now consider a random vector x which consists of n components x1, x2, 2, xn. Then we see that x has an elliptical distribution if x has the same distribution as mu plus ay. What is y? y is a circular distribution with psi as the generator and a this is a matrix of order n into k and mu is a vector of order n into 1 and these uh, what I mean is a and mu they are matrix and vector of constants. So thus we see that the elliptical distributions are obtained via multivariate affine transformations of spherical distributions. The characteristic function of an elliptical distribution, see we write it as phi suffix x s, that comes out to be e to the power i s transpose mu psi s transpose sigma s, where sigma is given by a a transpose, where a has been defined in the earlier slide. How do we denote an elliptical distribution? Well, we can say x is distributed as en mu sigma psi, where psi denotes the generator, mu is the location vector, and sigma denotes the dispersion matrix. Now, it should be noted over here that sigma and psi, they are uniquely determined only up to a positive constant. Now let's consider an elliptical distribution of order p with the parameter vectors mu and d and d is diagonal. If the components of x namely x1, x2 to xp these are independent then x will have the multivariate normal distribution. Here I give some subclasses of p-dimensional spherical distributions. C in each of these cases denotes a normalizing constant. So what are these distributions? We have the quotes type distribution, multivariate normal, where the mean vector is null and the dispersion matrix is i, that is all the variables involved, they are uncorrelated. We have the Pearson type 7, multivariate t, multivariate Cauchy, Pearson type 2, logistic, multivariate Bessel, scale mixture, stable laws, multi-uniform. Now the elliptical distributions have vast application. Like the heavy-tailed multivariate T distribution, it is often seen to provide excellent fit to financial return data. The various features that are observed in portfolio analysis they are found to hold for all elliptical distributions. They also provide robust statistics in which researchers they examine how statistical procedures perform on the class of elliptical distributions in order to gain insight into the procedure's performance on even more general problems. Now in order to know the shape of a given distribution in terms of whether it is spherical or elliptical we can look at the contour plots. What are contour plots? Contour plots are sometimes called level plots. They are also sometimes called Z slices or isoresponse values. Contour plots are a way to show a three-dimensional surface on a two-dimensional plane. They graph two variables x and y which could be the predictor variables on the two axes x and y and also a response variable z as contours. Now contour plots are very useful in identifying multivariate distributions. Let us look at the contour plot of a bivariate normal distribution. So here we have these two variables x and y and in place of z we have the density function of the joint distribution of x and y. Now the mean vector is given over here in the second diagram which is uh, which has the components 1 and 2 and sigma is not an identity matrix over here. Now from the shape on the base we can see that this is elliptical and therefore this distribution belongs to the 
class of elliptical distributions. Now let's look at the contour plot of a bivariate normal distribution where the variables involved are uncorrelated. So as we see that here the distribution belongs to the class of spherical distributions. This is very clear from the second graph. Now this diagram, it gives the bivariate normal uncorrelated and correlated cases. Uh, it gives the contour plots. The first one in the upper left hand side corner, that takes sigma x to be equal to sigma y, but, but the correlation coefficient is equal to zero. In this case, we are taking the mean vector to be equal to null and we find that the contour plot identifies the distribution as belonging to the class of spherical distribution. Now suppose instead of rho equal to 0 we take rho equal to 0.75 then the distribution is identified as an elliptical distribution. Similarly for rho equal to minus 0.75 now suppose we change sigma y to sigma y equal to twice sigma x instead of sigma y equal to sigma x in the earlier examples and we take rho equal to 0. So when they are uncorrelated we have already seen in the other slides that it should be a spherical distribution and we do identify it as a spherical distribution in this case. And the other two cases where rho is 0 0.75 or rho is equal to minus 0 0.75, we find that the distribution belongs to the elliptical distribution. This is an, a bivariate t distribution. So we observe from the second diagram that which gives the plot of x1 against x2 that there is an elliptical shape indicated over here which identifies this bivariate T distribution as an elliptical distribution. A study was considered on daily minimum temperature for two towns in New York. The data was collected for a month and attempt was made to fit a multivariate distribution. In fact, it is a two-variate distribution and the plot showed elliptical shape which indicates that an elliptical distribution will be suitable for this purpose. These are two of the references which talk about spherical and elliptical distributions. So we have looked into spherical and elliptical distributions. We have seen that uh, the spherical distribution that is generalizing the multivariate uncorrelated normal and t distributions which we are uh, very familiar with and for real life data often as I have shown in the last example we find that the elliptical distribution it could also be the spherical distribution which comes handy in analysis of the data.